Welcome to Great Heart Connects. I'm Marcel and I'll be your host. Thank you for joining us today. Since September 2020, Green Heart Connects has brought together people from around the world every month to exchange ideas for caring for the earth and for each other. We have heard so many wonderful and inspiring stories since then. We have talked to so many different people about ways to live a good life while still protecting the earth. We've heard from so many of you through your questions and your feedback. And we have also shared resources that would hopefully help you to improve your local communities and the world. As we enter the new year, we will be moving away from the monthly live episodes of Green Heart Connects. And instead, we will be hosting live periodic episodes. So for example, on March 17, 2022, we will be hosting a conversation with the folks at EcoPeace Middle East regarding water conservation in the Jordan River Valley. Now they have been in the news quite a lot lately about all of the great work that they have been doing. So we're super excited about that episode and you don't wanna miss that. Greenheart still believes that exchange has the power to change lives. So we will continue to share fresh content and do deep dives into the experiences of our program participants, our hosts and our alumni through Connects, our seasonal newsletter that we'll be debuting in January, 2022. If you would like to sign up, please drop us a line at connects at greenheart.org. And in the meantime, we invite you to continue to engage with us on social media, where we will continue to share stories of hope and understanding. Our topic today is personal growth, and our guest is Michael Volby, the President and Managing Director of Explore Asia in Thailand. Explore Asia has helped thousands of people gain life-changing cross-cultural experiences through teacher training and job placement, through homestays, through volunteer programs, and so much more. Teaching and learning abroad is truly the adventure and experience of a lifetime. So today we will hear a presentation from Michael and then we will meet back here for a live Q&A with Michael over in Thailand. After that, you'll want to stick around for a short segment on Rescue Paws, P-A-W-S. We think you'll be inspired. So, are you ready? Let's go. Oh. Hi, my name is Michael Volpe, and I am the leader of Explore Asia. Explore Asia is, is an educational and cross-cultural programs organization uh, that brings mainly Westerners from native English speaking countries over to Asia and beyond and trains them in how to teach English as a second language and then places them in teaching jobs and supports them while they're in those positions. Um, since we were founded in 2012, uh, we've brought over about 6,000 native English speakers to become teachers in Asia, with the, the vast majority of those being in Thailand. Uh, one of the cool things to, to think about is bringing over six or 7,000 teachers, and each one of those teachers teaching upwards of about 500 students. You really get a full kind of grasp of the the number of students that we're able to impact uh, through our education and cross-cultural programs. Um, this will be one of the most challenging, but also most rewarding experiences that you will ever have in your life. And it will really fundamentally change you as a human being. It will improve you in so many ways that it's hard to fathom unless you actually go through the entire process. I think the personality traits that make a good teacher include someone who is adaptable, someone who can persevere under difficult circumstances, someone who just kind of goes with the flow, who doesn't try to micromanage their experience, but who really embraces the idea that things are unexpected things are gonna happen and that taking it in stride is going to 
keep you in a good place emotionally um, and also is going to help you have a smoother, more rewarding experience. Also, you know, someone who's open to guidance and feedback from people who have um, taken this road before, who have taught here, who have gone through the program, um, who have mentored and counseled other teachers. You know, you have to know when to take advice and know when to listen. And I think that is something that also makes a very good teacher. They have in their minds the way this is going to go before they arrive, and they struggle when things don't go according to what they expected. Um, but it's always the most fulfilling to learn and get uh, feedback from teachers who have gone out into the field, who have taken the plunge to placements that were not exactly what they wanted initially in parts of the country that they didn't expect to be. And when they do that and they struggle at first, some of them, you know, they, they contact us and they're upset, they're, they're frustrated, they're, they're lonely, um, they're really having trouble adapting, you know, really facing a uh, culture shock. And then to see how, you know, that, that initial shock subsides and by the end of the first month, they seem to be in a little bit better place. And when we check in with them the next month, I mean, they're really hitting their stride. And by the end of the term, you know, they get in contact, they reach out and say, oh, this was such an amazing experience. It wasn't what I, what I wanted it to be initially, but it was exactly what I needed. Um, and they have this amazing cross-cultural experience that they never thought they would have. It's it won't be, we tell, and from those stories, we always tell people like teaching in Thailand is not going to be exactly what you expect it to be, but it's going to be more than you ever thought it could be. Um, I think that the most important thing is to do some research about the country that you're going to. Um, prepare yourself, learn a little bit of the language before you even uh, depart for uh, the country that you're going to learn the local language. A little bit of the local language can help give you confidence that um, you're going to be able to communicate on the ground. Because sometimes those everyday communications uh, can be a source of frustration if you're not successfully able to communicate and get what you need, you know, in the market or, you know, at the dry clean at the laundry place or, or someplace like that. Um, so I think doing a little bit of research beforehand is really important. Um, I also think that understanding culture shock and expecting it and getting your mind right for it. Um, we, we like to talk with uh, teachers about, you know, coping mechanisms. How do you cope in situations where you feel really frustrated, really aggravated? Um, so having something that you can identify as uh, a, a go-to um, uh, activity to do when you're really feeling stressed and frustrated will help you, um, you know, make that transition more smoothly. So, because I think if you really understand the culture and you're prepared, you can get an enormous amount out of your experience in a short time. And that would be ideally the way that cultural exchange programs, I'd like to see them go in the future is more preparation for teachers so that they can understand at a deeper level and, and get more out of their experience, more out of the, the limited time they often have in, in the host country. Teaching abroad can be a life-changing experience. Um, it can be one of the most amazing things that you'll ever do in your life. One of the most challenging things that you'll ever do in your life. It, it takes some bravery to go down this path and become a native English speaking teacher in a developing country like Thailand, especially. Um, it takes bravery, it takes fortitude and, and focus um, and perseverance. And you have, to, you have to overcome a lot. You have to overcome the, the, the language barrier. You have to overcome the cultural barrier in general. Find out what you're made of. You have to be able to overcome obstacles. You have to be able to think on your feet. You have to expect the unexpected in Thailand. Things never go according to plan. When I'm working with uh, teachers and bringing them to Thailand, 
I often say that like, you know, when you're looking back on this experience uh, years from now, the most valuable part of the experience won't be, you know, the beaches where you were kind of sipping margaritas on, in the sand. It won't be the, you know, the, the food experiences. It'll be the time you spent in a Thai organization adapting to all the challenges and all the, 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 the unexpected circumstances and what, how you grew as a professional, how you grew all these diverse skills from your need to adapt and, and overcome the challenges that these organizations threw at you. Those skills you build will benefit you later in life. If you're lucky and you spend enough time with Thai people, a little bit of that amazing culture rubs off on you. It kind of sticks in you. It becomes part of your character. And then when you take that home, that's, that's, the, that's the best part, is when you're able to take a little bit of the culture home, embedded in your character, where it changes who you are. And you become, in that way, a little bit more Thai. And I think that's like, that's the awesome thing. Like if you can do that in your experience, then you have gotten something so precious out of this experience. Hi everyone, and joining us live from Thailand is Mike Wolfie. Hi Mike, how are you? Hello, hello everyone. I'm great, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and tell us where exactly in Thailand are you? Um, I'm in a, a beach town called Hoi Hien, which is about uh, three hours south of Bangkok along the coast. Wonderful, and um, we should say it's happy Friday to you because it's Friday morning. That's talking. right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yes. It's about 12, uh, uh, 11 hours, uh, sorry, 12 hours uh, ahead of Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And everyone else who's joining us today, thank you so much for being here. And we apologize for the technical difficulty that we experienced, but we're so glad that you're here. And um, I hope that you're able to catch the wonderful presentation. But if not, um, I'm sure you will hear more about it during the live Q&A segment that we're about to enter. As always, the recording of this episode will also be available within 24 hours after the live session. So don't forget to uh, log back in and catch that if you missed it. So before we get started, I would love to say hi to everyone again. And please, if you have not done so, if you wanna write your name at the bottom of the comment field where you're joining us from, and if you have any questions for Mike, please write them at the, at the comment section and I'll be sure to uh, go through them during our live q and I know he can't wait for your questions. So to get us started, I would love to hear more about how you got started in cultural exchange. Can you tell us that story, Mike? Sure. I, I came to Thailand in 2001, so almost 20 years ago, um, to work and, and live in, in Thailand. And um, it was just such an amazing experience. And it, when I went back to the U.S. Uh, in 2005, after spending about three and a half or four years in Thailand, um, I just, it kind of sunk in. It didn't sunk in, in initially when I returned home, but it sunk in after a few months, like how much that experience had changed me as a person, uh, made me a better person and made me a, a wiser person. And um, And when I, the first chance I had after being home, I, I came back to Thailand and I, I really wanted to, I realized that my, my life that I wanted to, to give back to others and help them along that, that transition. Because even though it was life-changing for me, it was a rocky road. Like I didn't have an organization to help me kind of adjust to living in Thailand. So I made a lot of kind of like faux pas and cultural mistakes and misunderstandings. Some of my misunderstandings lasted for years until I, you know, realized what 
what I was seeing and, and understood it at a deeper level. So when I finally got into cultural exchange, I was like, okay, I want to help smooth out the bumps for other people. I want to help them avoid some of the same mistakes I've made because I've made like, if you had a checklist, I made every mistake in the book, you know? Um, and so I, I really got into cultural exchange because I knew what the end result would be, which would be this life changing experience. And I wanted to help people in the transition, help them, help them adjust better than, than my experience. Well, I'm glad you mentioned about that because it is not easy to uproot your life and move to a whole different country where you don't speak the language, you don't understand, you can't read the, the language, and I know they use a different alphabet there. And so it can be frustrated and you could be making all of this faux pas and rookie mistakes. How yes. stressful could it be for someone who, you know, they may have or have never been abroad? How stressful could that be for them? Um, it, it can be very stressful. You know, there are, when you're moving to a culture in a country like Thailand, it's, the culture is completely different. And um, the expectations have to be adjusted really at a, at a level that you may not be used to back home. So it can be very frustrating, very challenging. It's an amazing experience, but um, it, it can be frustrating and challenging. And that's why with our program, we try to help people understand the culture, not just the do's and don'ts, even though those are obviously really important, but mm -hmm. like, what are you going to experience working in a Thai organization or a Korean organization? What are you going to experience like in the local community? Um, so that, you know, we, we kind of get a little deeper than what you might find, you know, in, in you know, at just kind of dealing with the surface level, you know, so we can, they can understand the why, not just the what. Mm -hmm. And once you understand why something's happening, it's, it's easier to like take on board. It's easier to adjust to. But if you don't know the why and you're just seeing things and they look really different and there's no real explanation or understanding, that kind of heightens someone's frustration. So understanding the why is an important part of adjusting to the local culture. So yes, in a long-winded way, it can be frustrating and challenging, but we have really kind of spent a lot of time trying to help people unpack the why. And I think with that information, that makes the transition a lot smoother. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. One of the things that caught me in your presentation was that you mentioned about this whole experience. It teaches you about resilience, how to think on your feet, yes. and also expect the unexpected. And yes. while you're going there to teach, you are actually getting life lessons, skills that are transferable to whatever profession that you may end up doing when you come back to the U.S. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. And that, this is like gets at the heart of my own personal experience, like living in Thailand for four years, my first time here, going back to the U.S., entering the job market as kind of a, you know, in my mid to late 20s. Um, I realized all these skills that I had gained that I never even thought about until I was like in the workforce, talking with would be employers, trying to like sell myself to organizations. and and you know, then that's when it, I realized just how many skills that you gain when you're teaching abroad in a country like Thailand or Korea or Vietnam. Um, you do learn like a lot of skills like resilience, um, patience, uh, the ability to yeah, deal with uncertainty, uh, the ability to um, the ability to communicate across cultures those kinds of skills. And these skills are in really high demand in the workplace. And that's why, like, when you come back, I had a lot of organizations organize interviews with me just solely based on the fact that I had taught abroad. And they weren't really that interested in, although it obviously depends on the career, but for me, they weren't as interested in the actual teaching as they were interested in the fact that you had lived and worked abroad. So they knew that that presents a lot of challenges, unique challenges, and they wanted to hear how you overcame those challenges and what that experience was like for you, what you took away from it. So that's something that uh, you, you, definitely, you definitely build some really important soft skills that 
um, you may not think are really demanded in, in, the, in the workplace, but employers are looking at those types of skills. They want those skills in their employees, and it's much easier to get them when you're living abroad than it is staying in your home country. Right. So for alumni who have done this program, they need to be able to articulate the skills that they gain during the exchange program, especially yeah. when they are interviewing and being able to sell themselves, not so much about the teaching experience, but during that time, what have you learned about yourself, how you manage to be successful even in a, in a different environment and um, just to keep going and keep moving and you mm -hmm. know, to get it eventually, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, there are, the, it's not only the skills you develop, but how you reflect on them because that was one of the problems I had. Like I would go into interviews and I wouldn't, I, I couldn't articulate really. People would say, so what was it like teaching in Thailand? I'd be like, oh, it was amazing. It was life-changing. But I, I hadn't really thought about the details, you know? And, right. and that's something we really um, encourage our teachers to, to do is when they're in the field, like think about the skills they're developing, reflect on them and like mm -hmm. by journaling or, or writing, like writing down what, what kinds of challenges they've overcome. Um, so that once they're, they do transition back to their home country, um, whether it's six months or several years later, um, they understand the skills that they develop because there's so many new skills you develop when you live abroad. Um, and I think that uh, those, those are, are in really high demand out there. It's just, it's just being able to recognize what you've gained and reflect on it and then articulate it for, for would-be employers back home. Excellent. Well, we have many people joining us today from all over. I just wanted to give a shout out to um, people who are here. We have um, Kathy from Maine, Ian from Ian and Anna from Greenhouse Travel in Chicago. We have Nancy from Richmond, Virginia, Julie from Chicago. And we also have, I hope I'm not mispronouncing their names, Dion and Steve Seidel joining from Chevy Chase, Maryland. They are Explore Asia alumni from 2019-2020. So we have former participants here joining us today. Excellent. And we have a question from one of the audience. Um, this is Antonius from Chicago. He's asking, what do you think is the most challenging aspect for Americans who are doing this for the first time and what do they need to do to better prepare? Great question. Great question. Um, for me, like the, the number one insight that I had, it took me a decade to learn this, is that working in a Thai organization is very, very different from working in a Western organization. And the, it's because the underlying values are, are different. You know, in Western organizations, the, num the, the top values are efficiency and productivity. And we learn about that from a young age, and those values have permeated all types of different organ types of organizations, from businesses to schools to, to to NGOs to government agencies. Everything is geared towards that. In Thailand, I, I noticed that things were not geared towards efficiency and productivity, and and so that was pretty frustrating for me at first because things wouldn't happen like clockwork. There there wasn't like there just wasn't the same focus on on using resources in the most efficient way possible. And it took me about a decade and I learned that the most important value in any Thai organization is harmony. Mm. And that was a real eye opener for me because once I understood that, that harmony was really important, everyone getting along, everyone being kind and, 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 and helpful and, and uh, pleasant towards one another was actually the thing that was most valued among individual workers and as an organization was the, the goal that they were set up to achieve, um, it became a lot easier to understand what looked to me through my lens of Western work culture to be kind of inefficient and unproductive was actually because their values were different. And that took me one decade to figure out. Wow. <laughs> it took me a whole 10 years to figure out. And it was a rocky road to get to that 10 years. Um, but once I understood that, I, I respected and appreciated even more the way Thai organizations worked. And I didn't get as frustrated when things didn't go according to plan or 
when things seemed inefficient. I wasn't like, you guys are doing it wrong. Just like, you know, right. wake up. This is the way it should be done. Like uh, that kind of melted away. And it was like, okay, I understand why it's being done this way. Because if the goal is harmony, it works perfectly. But if the goal is efficiency and productivity, it looks like it's not working properly. And I think there's nothing you can do to prepare for that. We'll kind of help prepare you for that. Um, but that is something that is probably the, the key insight of the program because you guys are going to be working in Thai schools. So you need to understand the way Thai organizations work. So I guess that's the number one challenge. I think this is probably the most important thing about any cultural exchange program is that you get to a point where you are seeing things from a different lens you're not only seeing things from your lens, the lens that you are used to growing up, and you start seeing things from a different perspective, and you, you stop saying that this is good, that is bad, versus it is just different. The thing, the, the, what they value are different than what we value. And so when you, you said that once you get there, then things become easier. Um, Yes. How how do you how do you get there? How do you get to a place where I understand that harmony is the most important thing working in a Thai organization? But don't you have this? You know, you still have this. You know, clockwork. We need to be on time. We need to productivity, being efficient, and all of that. How do you get over that that inner struggle? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that. Uh, number one, just knowing that is really important. Like, I didn't know that. I, I, I spent a decade trying to figure out why things were the way they were. It just didn't make any sense. And it was really frustrating. But once I understood, I had to discover that myself. No one told me I couldn't find it in a Lonely Planet guidebook or, you know, on a, on a blog someplace. Once I understood that, like, that was really the key step for me. So I feel like the knowledge is important. And then obviously, like, it's culture shock, you know, you're going to experience that culture shock. And the key thing is to let people know, like, hey, that's going to come, like, there's going to be that experience. And, and I was just talking to a, a class a couple days ago in, in Hoi Han and in Thailand. And I was explaining to them, like, here's a scenario where things don't go according to plan. Here's how you're going to feel. These are all like real, like understandable emotions that you're going to feel. Like you're going to feel frustrated. You're going to feel, uh, you know, uh, overwhelmed. Um, but once you get through it, you will get through it. And once you get through it, you're, 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 you're going to realize like, Hey, I'm, I'm still alive. I, I did this and I got through it and, and it wasn't that bad. And, and everyone looks really happy. And so, you know, and, and I tell people, you know, somebody was like, well, do they expect, like, when things go unexpected and, and not according to plan, do they expect, is the bar really high, too? Because that would make me, I was like, no, it's actually not. The bar is really low. You just, if you go in with the right attitude, no one expects, like, we set a huge a high bar for ourselves, a bar that, you know, even, even a perfect person, if there was one, couldn't achieve. But the, the key to being successful and in, in kind of adapting in Thailand is like realizing like, hey, going in with the right attitude is the most important thing. The bar is not that high. Just go with the flow. Everyone's there to support you. And you wing it and you realize just how good you are at winging it. Like you're better than you ever gave yourself credit for. Um, so I think that going through that process one or two times of unexpected things happening, you, you go through it, you, you do it. And you realize it's not that bad. It's actually fine. And then you become, by the end of a one term in Thailand, you're like a pro at, at adjusting on the fly. Like nothing ever phases you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, that's also part of the process. So knowledge and just going through it and understanding that, that this is going to happen and you're going to do just fine. And you do it once or twice. And then by the third or fourth time, it becomes like really uh, easy for you. And then it just, you're just used to it. And so I think those two key elements of adjusting are, are probably the, the biggest things that, the biggest ways that you overcome that, that difference. Well, that's probably one of the best um, pep talks
talks uh, that I've ever heard for anyone who <laughs> is looking to travel and are not is not sure about how can I do this? Can I overcome this? Is it going to be too much of a of a of a jump that I need to make? It's the answer is no. You just you have it in yourself. You just don't know it yet. You just need to be in that environment, and you'll actually you'll do fine. Don't 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 worry about it. And of course, we have organizations like yours, Export Asia, to assist with the participants while they're there, which is great. One of the things that we get asked a lot is whether or not another English speaking person will be in the area that they are assigned. Is that something that is expected? How does that work? Yeah, so most of the, like for, for Thailand especially, um, the vast majority of our teachers are placed in schools that have other native English speaking teachers in them. Um, or when that doesn't happen, which is maybe like three or four percent of the time, there are other teachers in the local community at different at different schools. So it's it's very rare that you wouldn't be placed in a in a school that has other that doesn't have other native English speaking teachers. Like it, it's very common to be placed with other teachers. Perfect. So now, obviously, we have been in the pandemic era. Um, we were just talking about masks earlier. Um, it is it is hard to travel. It's not as easy to travel during the pandemic era. So first, I wanted to know how has the pandemic affected your business, affected the travel industry from your perspective? Um, well, you know, uh, it's, it's a little bit different for teacher broad than for um, like volunteering types of things like for rescue paws, which is another organization that we have, you know, we saw our volunteers go from like, you know, 10 a month down to zero because coming into Thailand with um, quarantine restrictions uh, was, was not worth it for somebody who was just going to be coming for a couple weeks or a month. Um, for our teach program in Thailand. Yeah, we had, we were bringing in teachers, the entire time of the pandemic up until now. So people were um, really uh, willing to put up with the inconvenience and the added cost of a two week quarantine um, because they were coming for a long period of time and wanted to, to settle in Thailand. Um, so we didn't really see uh, too much of a drop off in travelers to Thailand or South Korea during COVID. So it was just a matter of like the country, did the country stay open? Um, if it did, teachers were coming. Um, if it totally closed, like Myanmar and Japan, then uh, teachers didn't come. So we, we've seen like teachers have been quite resilient uh, to, to coming on our programs even during the pandemic. But luckily for a country like Thailand, now we're down to like one night quarantine in a hotel. It's, I just did it myself recently. It's super easy. You, it's literally less than a day. Um, and um, so the quarantine times are either being totally abolished or reduced to the point where it's just like a little tiny hassle, not like, you know, two weeks in a room type of situations, which is what we had early on in the pandemic. So things are definitely heading in the right direction. And, um, but yeah, it hasn't really stopped the flow of, of teachers. Great. I'm glad to hear that. You mentioned a couple of different countries. So I've heard Thailand, South Korea, Japan, Myanmar, what countries or regions are you exploring for future programs? Wow, yeah, so I think that uh, we are thinking of maybe Spain and Egypt in the future are two countries that we have on our radar uh, to, to look at. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to change our name really coming up here soon just because we started off with Asia and we're <laughs> trying to expand beyond. So. We might have to do a bit of rebranding, but uh, we are kind of looking to expand to, to other countries outside of Asia um, with, the, with the same model that we've been using in Asia. So um, that, that's hopefully uh, coming up in the near future. Excellent. Now, I heard about Rescue, Paw, rescue Paws, and um, I know that we're going to have a, a short segment about that after this, but... Can, you, you've told us that a lot of your teachers are giving back to their communities while they're teaching. Some of them have started their own NGOs to help kids and animals. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. What do you think sure. that, what is it that motivates 
and inspires the travelers to do that. Wow, yeah, that, that's something I'm really starting to explore a lot more because I've just heard so many stories of teachers across our programs who, you know, they get on the ground and they teach and they realize just how much English helps, English language helps um, l like students make a better life for, for themselves uh, because English is not just a hobby, it's a, it's a way to move up uh, in the socioeconomic ladder because it's just in demand in business and in work and in government, English language skills are in very high demand and they, they, they are a huge differentiator in terms of, of income and, and um, salary. So they see like what an impact English language has and that is kind of a stepping stone to other things. So they bring with them their passion. Um, so if they're passionate about animals and they see kind of like a lot of stray animals in the community, then they try to make a difference there. Um, and I think it's, it's great because when they come to Explore Asia, they know we have Rescue Paws. They know kind of the story of Rescue Paws, how it got started, how you can start from almost nothing. You know, we started from just like, you know, putting dog food on the, on the street for dogs that looked hungry and, and then it just took off from there. So uh, they can see that, hey, I don't need a lot. I don't need an established organization. I don't need tons of resources. I just need you know, an idea and, and a, a commitment, and I can make some, some amazing things happen, and I can change lot, one life or many lives. And so when they, I feel like that provides a good model for them. And I actually, going forward in the future, I want teachers who are coming in to learn about from the stories of other teachers who came and, and set up these NGOs and, and did special environmental projects with their students and, you know, went above and uh, went beyond the classroom with their passion and, and, and tried to help the local community in other ways so they can not just get inspire, inspiration from Rescue Paws and Explore Asia, but get, draw inspiration from, from alumni who came through in, in the program and did some really amazing things in the field. So that's my dream is to just have every teacher who comes not only teach in the school, but take their passion another step to give back to the community in whatever way they feel most passionate about. So that, that would, I mean, imagine how much we could do if every teacher came with and, and was able to apply their passion outside of the classroom to do something good for the community. Like, oh, it would just be unbelievable what, what we could accomplish, so. Yes, I am 100% with you on that. Let's uh, keep that dream alive and let's continue to, to plant the seeds in, you know, I think teachers who are open-minded and who are willing to take that extra step, they find that their experience is a lot more rewarding and so enriching. Um, and so I, I wish you guys all the best. And I hope that a lot of the teachers will, um, if we have 100% of the teachers volunteer, I think that's awesome. Um, so we're going to talk about Rescue Paws after this, which is a volunteer group sure. that Explore Asia co-founded. Just a little bit, if you could tell us about how that got started. Yeah, so we, we, we'd we always been really passionate about animals. And, you know, living in Thailand, you do see, for anybody who's been here, they know, like, there are a lot of uh, stray dogs and cats on the streets here, and uh, millions in, in the country. And we, some of the cases really break your heart. Like, you see a case. And it's just like, oh man, this is this is really heavy. And we we just kind of started, as I mentioned, just putting out dog food for dogs on our trip home every day from the office. So we saw some really um, hungry dogs, and um, and then eventually we were bringing over uh, volunteers to volunteer vets to help give wound care and 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 medical care to some of the animals that we saw on our route home that were really sick and in need. Um, and then it just kind of grew up from there. Um, we, we have a temple that we take all of our participants to um, where they do a meditation uh, and, and Dharma talk with the monk there. We had a relationship with that monk and he invited us to actually open up a kennel and a clinic on the grounds of the temple. And they actually had a problem with stray dogs. And um, they, he said, I'll let you open up here, but you got to promise to take care of our stray dog population. Actually in Thailand, 
um, it's, it's, it's uh, common for people to dump animals they don't want at the temple um, because they feel like the monks will take care of them. So they had a lot of stray animals and they didn't know how to manage them. So they invited us to come. And so we had our, our clinic, we had our kennel and we had volunteers coming in and, and our staff grew. And so it's been about eight or nine years. And uh, now we have a full-time team of about 10 staff members and we help about uh, close to 800 animals that we take care of. And, um, and our mission is to uh, sterilize, to prevent future populations out of control of, of stray animals. And we do education and international and local adoptions. Um, and actually Greenheart has been a, a huge advocate for rescue paws since the beginning, like donating um, a considerable amount of funds sending us volunteers, sending us interns to help us grow and, 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 uh, and spread our work to other areas of, of Thailand. So it's been a really great relationship and, you know, and we re really appreciate the support from Greenheart along the way. Well, thank you for sharing that um, wonderful information and thank you for all, all that you do. Um, it has been so wonderful hearing about your experience, about Explorasia, about all of the wonderful things that the teachers can do. Um, and I, I hope that this has been enlightening for anyone who's thinking about teaching abroad. Um, please don't hesitate because the benefits will outweigh all of the, any of the concerns that you have. And so Mike, it's a pleasure uh, speaking with you. Thank you so much for sharing and we wish you much, much success in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Kap kun krap. All right. Well, everyone else, stay tuned for Rescue Paws. We have thousands of Greenheart friends and partners from around the world who share our commitment to connecting people and planet. Explore Asia also gives back to the Thai community via a group that they co-founded called Rescue P-A-W-S, Rescue Paws. It's an amazing organization aimed at helping the stray dog population mm -hmm. in Thailand. I think. Let's watch. No problem. So I can go and watch this on, on uh, is it going to be up on YouTube or is it going to be up on, or how, how could I go and watch? Thank you, Explore Asia and Rescue Paws. You are here because you want to learn about ways to care for our planet and for each other. We very much appreciate all of you who have spent time with us in the last 16 months to share these stories. And we hope that you have been inspired to take action to improve your local community and the world. And as always, we invite you to share your cultural exchange experience with us by emailing your stories and photos to connects at greenheart.org. All of the past Greenheart Connects videos can be found on our Greenheart International YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com forward slash Greenheart INTL. Greenheart International continues to offer cultural exchange programs in the US 
through Green Heart Exchange and in other countries around the world through Green Heart Travel. We support fair trade through our Green Heart Shop. We volunteer to help one another. We care for our environment. And we will continue to create wonderful experiences and wonderful stories for our participants, partners, and hosts. Thank you all. And until then, safe travels. Bye-bye.